Hey, everyone. Can you hear me? Uh, my name is Natter. I'm CEO of Basecoin. And I'm here to tell you about what we're working on. So before I start, uh, you know, guys, crypto is taking over the world. Um, and uh, that gets me pretty excited. Uh, are you guys excited? All right, you should be. Uh, but guys, there's a, there's a big problem here, is, is the issue, which is volatility. Uh, you see, right now, uh, all of the cryptocurrencies that exist today, almost all of them, are fixed supply. And what that means is that they can't respond to fluctuations in demand without fluctuations in the, in the, the price of each token. Um, and this is actually really fun if you have Bitcoin. It's been a fun uh, however many years for me. Uh, but the problem is that it actually precludes a lot of the most basic things in our economy, uh, in particular, things that involve time, contracts that involve time. Uh, and it turns out there are a lot of these, things like loans and salaries. They don't really work even if you have really, really low volatility. Even if you have 5% volatility, which is lower than gold, by the way, um, if you're trying to do a salary, let's say one Bitcoin uh, per month is your salary, because you're well paid, uh, as of recently anyway. Uh, if the price goes down, you end up going hungry at any point. Uh, if the price goes down, you end up going hung hungry. And if it goes up, your employer wants to fire you, because he doesn't want to pay you that much in Bitcoin. Uh, so if the volatility moves against you at any point during the term of your employment, uh, you know, you're, you're going to have a problem. And it turns to be this case with all of these contracts that involve time, which, by the way, are, are a lot of the most basic contracts in our uh, economy. So a lot of uh, misconception around this, which is that um, a lot of people, oh, there we go, a lot of people think that this volatility is going to go away over time, um, and that's simply not true. Uh, even if Bitcoin gets mass adoption, it's still going to have most likely very high volatility. Um, if there's a demand shock, anything like a recession or something like that would cause prices in the economy to spiral. Uh, in, in something well known called the deflationary spiral. Uh, and if you want proof of this, look at any other fixed supply commodity like gold, and you'll see that the volatility is still pretty high. Um, so this really, it's a problem that's not going to go away without a solution, um, which you know, we're working on. Um, so this is, this is Basecoin. Uh, so it's, sorry, this clicker isn't really working. I should have just made all the text come up. Um, so Bitcoin, uh, Basecoin is, is actually just like existing cryptocurrencies. It's a blockchain, uh, decentralized ledger, ownerless. Um, but uh, we, we, we make a couple of changes. So think of it as Bitcoin, but with the following two changes. The first is that we add an exchange rate to the blockchain um, via a decentralized oracle. So just imagine we get the exchange rate between, let's say, the token and the dollar onto the blockchain in a decentralized and trustless way. Then the blockchain's rules... Uh, are, are a little bit more complicated than Bitcoin, but not much, which is that they grow and shrink the supply of the token to keep that exchange rate fixed. So if you have a base coin, it'll be worth $1 today, it'll be worth $1 tomorrow, it'll be worth $1 forever. Um, and if you actually look at anything that's a currency today, things that are, things that are used as money, um, all of them have this elastic supply. And I actually, we, we at Basecoin actually believe this to be a feature, not a bug, of existing monetary systems, which is that they maintain a stable value against a frame of reference, usually a basket of goods. Um, so the way Basecoin uh, grows and shrinks supply is kind of this, the, uh, the magic of, of what we do, um, which is that it's very analogous to what central banks do today, which is that in order to contract the supply, the protocol all, by the way, decentralized and ownerless. The protocol issues bonds, which are the promise to coins in the future. People buy those bonds with base coin. So when it wants to contract the supply, protocol says, hey guys, here are a bunch of bonds for you to buy. Uh, give me your base coin. It takes that base coin out of circulation. Then when it needs to expand the supply, all it does is it pays back those, those bonds. Oh, I see that's not, it's not actually there. Anyway, we grow and shrink the supply on chain to, uh, to keep the price stable, which by the way is what existing central banks do. The problem with existing central banks is that you have to trust them to not give all the money to the government or to the banks. Uh, that's not a problem with us. Uh, cool. Um, so now I want to talk about the market for a stable coin, uh, which is basically any country uh, that has a hyperinflationary regime. In fact, it doesn't even have to be hyperinflationary. If it has more inflation than, let's say, the dollar, um, they're going to really want a, a stable coin. Um, and 
a lot of them actually are switching to Bitcoin right now because that's their best alternative. Um, even though Bitcoin is so volatile and they can't use it for these slightly more complicated you know, payments over time type contracts, uh, they're still switching to Bitcoin. So our thesis here is that when, when there's a big Bitcoin crash, a lot of them are really, we're gonna see a flight to safety, but safety is going to be redefined as a coin that is stable, uh, in particular, uh, stable against a basket of goods or, or stable against the USD in our case, which is a basket of goods. Um, so uh, just some other use cases. Um, the distributed app economy, which is, which is upon us. Um, if you think about uh, wanting to use something like Uber or something like Airbnb, uh, it's, not, it's really unattractive if you have to hold this uh, unstable token that, that doesn't maintain its value over time. So we, th we see Basecoin and potentially a, a stable coin as the, the, the gas or the oil of the, the distributed app economy. Um, and then obviously as a replacement for Tether. So a lot of the exchange uh, trading volume on exchanges is back and forth between Tether. And that's because it's useful for inter-exchange arbitrage and things like that. So I'm getting close to, to the end of my time here. So the offshore banking system is, is tens of trillions of dollars. These are people who are trying to uh, keep their money outside of the regulatory jurisdiction of hostile entities. The ICO market, which, is, which we think is only going to grow, it kind of makes sense as, as a natural token for ICOs. You collect base coin, you can pay people with a stable value, and then unbanked businesses, which exist today uh, in the US, there are many of them. And so yeah, that's base coin, uh, algorithmic central bank, building a stable store of value. <laughs>